This is my project video for a bar top arcade that works on a retro pie. I uh, took the plans and all the ideas off the guys at Geek Pod. So this is their design that I just kind of duplicated. I even bought their plans and uh, used a lot of their stuff to help get me through the design. Um, I did make a couple variations. And that's kind of all I wanted to highlight on this video. So I, uh, I built it a little bit differently. I had uh, some butt joints that they didn't have. When I made the uh, buttons, I did recesses on the back side. Um, I used a CNC router, which you could do with a regular router and a spade bit, um, so that the buttons sit a little bit higher up or inside there. Um, I used the same type of construction method that those guys used. I used uh, carpenter's glue and brads to kind of frame the thing out. And it all went together relatively well. As long as you cut all your width pieces the same, everything should fit together nice and tight. Uh, MDF is pretty messy, but it's pretty easy to work with. Um, here you can see some of the framing for that we had to come up with to put the screen in because it was a little bit vague on their plans. Also, we did the same thing. We used a slot bit to cut the uh, slot for the T-molding. And when it was all set together, um, everything came together real nice and clean. Here you can see some of the um, structure there for holding the screen. And the screen sits behind a, uh, that front panel there and then leans back and then later we put stops in to keep it from falling out. So it's really just kind of set in there and it can be easily removed in case you would ever damage it or something like that. It comes out pretty easy. Uh, one thing I thought was important was coming up with a system for uh, labeling the buttons. So I printed these out on clear overhead, uh, just like a laser jet printer. I found a video game font and um, this way I could label everything with the coin and everything. Um, the one thing I would suggest is putting a little dab of super glue uh, when you put these in behind the uh, plastic uh, shields there because they do tend to spin if you're tapping them and you'll see later how mine kind of moved on me. Another thing that I added was an external power infused uh, power supply, kind of just a standard PC power supply uh, that goes into my power strip that powers everything up inside. Um, this way I have an external power switch and a removable uh, plug if I need to. So that made uh, it easy to turn the system on and off from the outside. Here you can see all my buttons installed on the um, underside of the control board. The wiring diagrams come with the buttons that you buy. Again, that button pack's like 60 bucks. Um, it's pretty easy to follow. The one thing I will tell you is make sure the joystick is installed the right way or up becomes down and down becomes up and everything gets reversed. Everything plugs into a board and then I just set the board inside and then I made my control board removable uh, in case I ever needed to change or fix anything. The marquee, I printed off the internet, so that's just a JPEG off the internet uh, with that Rampage logo. I sandwiched in between two pieces of plexi and I backlit it with a uh, set of strip LEDs that just plug into the um, power strip. These are the little bumpers I created. I, I 3D printed a couple little of these black bumpers and those prevent the screen from falling outward. So it sits tight at the bottom but then it can't catapult out. The only variation I have from his in terms of button layout is I put the one player and the coin button and the USB um, on the front panel as opposed to on the top. And that way giving us um, a little more room on top. Overall, the system works great. Here you can see where my buttons uh, twisted a little bit as we've been playing, so that needs to be fixed a little bit. But they light up nice and everything works as uh, promised. Obviously nothing on this thing would work well without the programming side of it, so if I had my friend uh, set me up with the retro pie and all the emulators and everything, this would just be a big box. But with 500 games on this, there's more than enough to play, and I strongly recommend a project like this. If you like building stuff, it took me about 10 hours, probably cost a little over 300 bucks, and uh, it was a great thing to build, and uh, I'm really enjoying it.